In this video, I'm going to show how to analyze data from RCT when you measure value of outcome variable at the baseline. Okay, so analysis involves two repeated measures, one at the baseline and one at the end of the study. And the variable of interest is a continuous variable. So we will talk about the technique called analysis of covariance, ANCOVA, and which is a linear regression uh, of continuous end of the study outcome as a dependent variable. And we effectively adjust for baseline outcome value as a covariate. And the example we have today is from a back pain study. So suppose that we randomly assign 20 people with a lower back pain to two treatment groups, 10 patients in each group an exercise group in a control group. A pain is measured at both at before and after the treatment. So before is a baseline and after is the end of the study uh, time. And on the visual analog scale, that can range from one to 100 and higher score indicate more pain. And the scores are listed in below. So you have 10 patient in exercise group and another 10 patient in control group. And each patient are measured, pain score was measured twice, uh, baseline at the end of the study value. Okay. And then now we want to assess if the exercise intervention decreased the back pain. So this is a data set, and then each line represents the data before each patient. So you have a 10 lines in control, and 10 lines in exercise group indicate 10 patients and 10 patients, and total of 20 patients. So what the typical analysis are being conducted is, since this is a randomized study, so uh, we assess baseline balance. So take a mean of baseline, in control and mean of the baseline pain score in exercise group and the mean is actually uh, 69.5 for exercise group and 62.5 for control group so uh, and we either eyeball check or put the p-value I don't recommend to put the p-value but let's check these two are meaningfully different and then judge it looks like randomization worked, so there is no meaningful difference in baseline pain score. And analysis might uh, be done just comparing the post pain score between exercise group and control group. Okay, using student T test or Mount Whitney U test. So when you do that, and uh, so you judge baseline is pretty balanced by randomization, therefore uh, whether the mean of pain score at the end of the study value is different. And we actually did perform a t-test. And then here, confidence interval hugely overlaps, so p-value is greater than 0 0.05. And unfortunately, we did not detect statistical significance at pre end of the study pain score between two groups. All right, so let's analyze this data and make sure what I said is right. Uh, back pain, back pain .sav, and let's open. Okay, so we have 10 patients in intervention group, which is indicated group equal one, and then another 10 patients in control group and indicated uh, as group equal zero. Okay, and then each patients are measured twice at the end of at the beginning of the study at the end of the study, right? So we um, so the baseline variable. If you would, um, we judge randomization probably worked. So uh, we just compare end of the study value. So let's do a student t test or Mount Inu test. If you like non-parametric, let's just do Mount Inu test. So go to non-parametric test and independent samples and uh, put the post score in the test field and then group goes to grouping box. Ah, I forgot to click Mount Whitney. So go to setting and click on Mount Whitney U and then run. All right, here it is. So p-value based on Mount Whitney is 0.436, therefore we didn't detect a difference in end-of-the-study test score. Many people might write up 
the summary report for the study, and the report this was a negative study. Okay, before you do that, and I want you to consider one more thing.、Uh, how about adjust for baseline? And you might think, wait a minute, because randomization seems providing balance for baseline. So why you have to consider adjusting for baseline? And let's talk about if there's any benefit for adjusting for baseline. And that is a method called analysis of covariance. And ANCOVA is a technical term for linear regression when you have one categorical grouping variable as a categorical independent variable, which in this case a group a intervention versus control. And another independent variable, which is a continuous variable, and in this case, which is a baseline pain score. Okay, so that's what we call ANCOVA. And when baseline balance is detected, comparing only post measure is not biased. Okay, and however, it is highly conservative. And a patient whose score is higher at the baseline tend to also score higher at the post. Therefore,、uh, we can、uh, therefore there is a strong correlation between end of the study pain score and baseline pain score, and thus the baseline value of outcome variable often is the largest predictor of outcome. And adjusting for the baseline value of outcome variable often improves analytical power. And you may consider to account for baseline values of outcome variable in your analysis. And this is still in the case when. I mean, pre-treatment value, baseline values of outcome variable are very similar between two groups. So let me explain why that is true. Okay, and this is a hypothetical data set、uh, for outcome variable being some tumor marker. Okay, and、uh, we want to compare effect of intervention and treatment. Okay. And the patients are randomly assigned to intervention to、uh, control drug. Okay, and、uh, since age is known to be associated to this, and assume age is known to be associated with this marker value. Okay, and so. If you do linear regression, and you would see this type of association, okay, and、um, so randomization actually provide a balance in age between treatment versus control. So there is no difference in terms of age, okay, between blue and red, right? Okay, although age is a strong predictor of outcome, therefore. And you see a higher the age and value of outcome is greater, right? And so of course we want to put the age in the regression. So if you adjust for age and look at effect of treatment, and it indicate very strong a statistical significance、uh, between difference、uh, difference for. Uh, treatment versus control group. Okay, so you can report that effect of treatment is positive, significant. And but if you fail to, if you don't adjust for age, and then think about what is happening. So this is what you do. So if you ignore age from your analysis, what you do is you simply compare. Mean of this outcome marker value between intervention blue and between red. So if you take a mean average in red dot, this would be a value. Mean is eight point zero six, and if you take average between among these blue dots, and a mean is five point two six. So if you perform a student t test, for example, compare average of outcome variable between、uh, intervention and control. Ignoring age, okay, and you are comparing these two lines, and then let's look at the p-value, and p-value is no longer significant,、right? because why is that? Because ignoring for age, and we have too much variation. What is variation? Variation is 
average distance from each data point to group mean. So that's this one. Average data point to the mean within control group. So control group, this is the data variation you have. And then for the intervention group, okay, and variation would be each of the data points to this uh, mean of within intervention. So this much variation you have. Okay, so that contributes to p-value. So more will become insensitive this because it's too much variation. And although if you go back to this graph and let's look at variation of each data point to regression line, and which is much, 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 much less. Right? Am I convincing you? Okay, much less variation. That's a reflect on significant result. So what happens is by adjusting for age effect and you remove uh, effect by age and that improves precision of estimation of treatment. And let's look at the effect of treatment. Effect of treatment is minus 2.798, and which is really the average distance between these two lines. Okay, so that is 2.798. Okay, and which is actually the same in here. So here, if you take average between these two lines and which is 2.798. So adjusting for age did not change the effect of the treatment because age was perfectly balanced between treatment group blue and red therefore it cannot be confounder. If it's no confounder adjusted estimate effect of treatment and an, a, this is adjusted adjusted effect of treatment for age doesn't change an adjusted effect of treatment, right? So, uh, so what happening here is uh, randomization took care of a bias. So age is not the confounding, it's not changing effect of the drug, although it improved the precision of the analysis and therefore p-value got much smaller. Why it improved precision? Because adjusting for age and we eliminated much of variation noise um, in the analysis so precision got much better okay so for re this reason it's highly advisable even when the baseline value for the outcome variable is perfectly balanced and you should always adjust for baseline value in your analysis and that often improve the power of the analysis. What is the power? Power is probability of detecting the difference when there is a difference. So therefore, you do want to have enough power to detect the difference. Okay, so let's perform ANCOVA in SPSS. And ANCOVA is just a linear regression, okay, adjusting for baseline. So let's go back and go to linear regression. Okay, And outcome of interest is a post end of the study pain score. And then we are interested in assessing effect of group. Group is quoted 0, 1, so you don't have to worry about categorical uh, box. Actually, there is no categorical box in linear regression, but anyway. And you adjust for pre, and pre is a continuous variable, so it's okay to put it in this box. Okay, so let's click OK. Right? So, uh, effect of treatment is a uh, difference between intervention versus control group in terms of pain score is 15.704 and after adjusted for baseline pain score. Okay. Uh, so you present this as your result and then now p-value become highly significant.
because we eliminated noise from the analysis by adjusting for pretreatment uh, value for the pain score. Okay. So by adjusting for the pretreatment value of pain score, what we actually did is we removed effect of baseline pain score. That means analysis focused on change of pain score between pre and post. So you could interpret 15.704 as difference in uh, control and intervention in terms of change pain score uh, from baseline. Okay, the, so as, with the exercise, and you improve the pain score uh, further by 15.7 points, and that's uh, the result is highly significant. Having this data, uh, RCT comparing con intervention versus control and outcome is measured at the baseline at also at the end of the study. And many people actually do conduct the analysis which compare, uh, directly compare change. Okay, so you create change score by subtracting uh, pre uh, baseline value from end of the study value. And then simply compare the change score between two groups. And this type of analysis directly using change as outcome should be avoided. And change analysis does actually give you similar uh, gain in analytical power. And although statistically or mathematically, change analysis uh, involve many problems. And why, um, why we don't want to use t-test directly compare change score from baseline to end of the study. And here is a quote from our Vanderbilt Department Biostat website, and we have author checklist, uh, which is a very useful list, and I want you to take a look at that. And by looking at that, here is a reason, and we should avoid to use change score as a, directly as a dependent variable. Okay? And using each patient as her own control through classification calculation of change score is worse than using no control. If the baseline is noisy, if the correlation between baseline and follow-up measure is less than 0.5, uh, so um, for example, you have inflammation marker and you know it has so much noise. So you would think uh, inflammation marker in uh, three days period could be correlated, but with the noise, we don't see much correlation. And in that touch of case, subtracting baseline from end of the study value to compute change score is worse than just analyzing follow-up measurements. And a noisy baseline cannot hurt analysis of covariance except for spending one degree of freedom from the error variance. So ANCOVA adjusting baseline as a covariate in the regression and it does not harm for analytical power even when coordination between baseline and end of the study value is small because of the noise, okay? So please consider to adjust the baseline as a covariate and perform a regression analysis and for your RCT data and comparing effect of drug between groups. So which means don't forget to measure baseline outcome data at the baseline and when you conduct RCT.